Greetings. This is Prosthodontics on Friday Night Live, which addresses different steps of prosthodontic treatment and its side effects. This is the second lecture on Back to the Basics of Full Denture course series. Today we're going to focus on taking impression on the lower, which is very important and difficult to do, especially in edentulous cases. Today, Professor Kim Jong-un of Yonsei University College of Dentistry, Department of Prosthodontics, is going to talk on this topic. Greetings, I'm sure you're very busy teaching and researching as well as treating patients. Thank you for coming on Prosthodontics on Friday. Thank you. Could you briefly introduce your lecture? Today I'm going to talk about taking successful impression in edentulous mandible cases. Personally, I believe we need to understand fully about the anatomical structure in the mandible. That is most important, so I want to focus on that. I've also highlighted some key points. This is something that a lot of dentists find very important. Listening to you makes me look forward to your lecture even more. Those of you watching from dental site, you can participate real time via the chat. Leave your questions. Your questions can be answered real time and you may be able to try your luck at winning coffee coupons. Those of you who leave questions that are chosen as best questions will be given dental set from Vucin and Music Tiger. Leave your questions and win these amazing prizes. I look forward to your keen interest and participation and let us begin today's Prosthodontics on Friday lecture. Greetings. I'm Professor Kim Jong-un of Department of Prosthodontics at Yonsei University College of Dentistry. This is my second time appearing on Prosthodontics on Friday, and thank you for inviting me once again. The topic of today is successful impression taking method for edentulous mandible, and this was the requested topic. Let's take a closer look at this. In the case of fully edentulous mandible cases, I think it's important for us to be aware of these images. When you take impression, what kind of form it should take? Look at the mentalis muscle and such, and this should be reflected in the end result. It is important to take good impression. I'm going to talk about various factors, but if you look over here, there's S-curve. In the bandable, it's very important to have S-curve in the lingual aspect. We are going to look at why this form comes to be. When we get this kind of impression in the end result, you can see S-curve on the lingual side as well. In this case, two implants have been placed in the mandible and overdenture magnet attachments were used. On the lingual side, you can see S-curve very clearly. Let's look at the overview. I'm sure you've looked at the upper with Professor Kwon Gung Rok the last time. In the case of mandible, it's more difficult supporting surfaces. When we think of available PDL space, if you think of upper as 50%, in the case of lower, you need to divide that into two once again. We also need to consider space for tongue movement. Therefore, the surface area of uh, supporting mucosa is much more limited. And it's within dynamic environment. Therefore, it's more limiting. And it can be difficult to get a seal 
and it's difficult to provide a successful result to the patient. The quality of cell mucosal structure and epithelial tissue is very important as well. The cell mucosal tissue needs to be appropriately thick and it needs to be bound strong with the bone under. Compared with the upper, there's more resorption in the lower. Even if we get successful end result, the ridge continues to get resorbed. We need to do continuous checkup, do relining so that the patient can use it nicely. We need to maintain it so that the patient can use it nicely for a longer period of time. Let's look at the bone resorption pattern. On the right is the skull. The lower basal bone is wider. If you touch it, the lower basal bone protrudes towards outside. In the case of upper, the basal bone is more narrow and with resorption it almost shrinks but in the case of lower it almost looks as if it's protruding buccally. Such tendency can be observed. If significant time has elapsed since extraction when making denture and aligning artificial teeth, it can be difficult to choose what as basis. In the case of lower, there are major landmarks that we need to reference in doing teeth alignment. When you take impressions, such landmark needs to be registered. It's very important. Let's look at bone resorption pattern. We need to understand the horizontal bone resorption pattern. What is very difficult is cases with extreme bone resorption. Such resorption can be divided into six categories. Class 1 is with tooth, class 2 right after extraction, 3 well-round ridge which has very little horizontal and vertical bone loss. In other words, a nicely healed socket. If we can make denture in this state, then we can get really good results, but actually not all patients have this kind of condition. If there's horizontal bone loss, then it's classified beyond class 4, and it's referred to as knife edge ridge. Next is flat ridge, and the final is depressed ridge. It's very difficult to treat. It almost has indentation at the center of alveolar bone. I believe it is a very important point in understanding the anatomical structures of a dentulous ridge. Nerve canal is exposed like this. The outer side is not resorbed, but it protrudes. And this is where it is connected to the muscle, like a mentalis muscle. And the muscles that form the floor of the mouth are attached to here. In the area where there used to be a tooth, resorption continues to occur. Therefore, it leads to a depressed appearance. In this case, even if you have excellent technique and take a good impression, and even if everything is perfect, it may be difficult to the patient to use. In the case of flat ridge or depressed ridge, overdenture is more recommended. I believe using implants can lead to better results. I believe we need to understand the anatomical structures very well. You need to remember the terms. Everything is important in the lower. It's very difficult to get a seal. We need to do everything perfect. More important than anything else, you need to get to good results in the lingual side. It's very difficult to do. I've highlighted number nine. It's retromyelohyoid fossa. This is the anatomical structure behind the muscle of the joint. Number 10 is myelohyoid ridge muscle. After that is retromyelohyoid fossa. 
there's slight undercut that we can utilize. I'm going to uh, explain about it later. In treating the mandible, it is very important to understand the physiology and movement of mylohyoid muscle. I've talked about S-curve earlier. This is an essential part of the S-curve, so I'm going to address it in detail later. Among different landmarks, I'm going to talk about the supporting structure. It's highlighted in blue in this image. The buccal part is referred to as the buccal shelf. If there is occlusal force from full denture, this can withstand the vertical occlusal force and it is classified as primary stress-bearing area. In the case of residual alveolar bone, it is secondary stress-bearing area. We need to get information about the buccal shelf well when we do impression taking. The behind area is retromolar pad. It's a very important landmark in doing teeth alignment. And it is also an important supporting structure. As mentioned earlier, in the case of mandible, there is a lot of cancellous bone. As I've shown you earlier, compared with the upper, there's four times more ridge resorption. It occurs very quickly. This is a tissue that can change anytime at all times. Residual alveolar bone cannot be classified as primary stress-bearing area. Buccal shelf is primary stress-bearing area. Let's look at the border. Behind the buccal foramen, it is positioned here. It is positioned before retromolar pad. This is a buccal shelf. And up to the external oblique ridge is the border. When the patient uses denture and does mastication, this part provides vertical support to withstand occlusion. Therefore, it is primary stress-bearing area. You need to apply more pressure in that area when taking impression. If you apply more stress as you take impression, then you can get a good result. I'm going to talk about this in more detail when I talk about making tree. Another important point is that this is an area where a lot of change does not occur. The bustinator muscle, the lower part of bustinator muscle is attached to buccal shelf. So, because uh, there is attachment with a the muscle, then bone resorption does not occur significantly and it has quite the thick submucosa. Therefore, it can withstand stress very well. Even if the muscle contracts, it does not hold significance. This is a muscle that does not contract in a way where the denture is dislodged. It does not lift the denture. It does not get in the way even if the muscle is pressed upon. There is no problem. I believe we need to get as much data on the buccal shelf when we take impression. That is very important. This is something that I've mentioned earlier. This is a quite an extensive area and it can withstand the vertical occlusal force and it has cushion effect because it is attached to the lower part of bustinator muscle and it does not lift the denture. Another important anatomical structure is mylohyoid ridge. When you touch it, it feels kind of pointy. It is towards the inner side of the tongue. 
This is a myelohyoid muscle, which forms the floor of the mouth, and it is attached to myelohyoid ridge, and it is related to anatomical structures that form the joint. Towards the anterior side, it becomes closer to inferior border, and towards the posterior, it becomes closer to residual ridge height. It is attached towards the tongue. When there is teeth, it is positioned quite low, but if there is a significant alveolar bone loss, then the bony prominence really becomes noticeable. At times, relief may be necessary. If you look at this image, it is in the middle. This is myelohyoid ridge, and there's muscle attached to it. This muscle is below the tongue and forms the floor of the mouth. It is very important in fabricating denture. The ridge and muscle needs to be understood. Take note of how the ridge runs once again. So please take note of it once again. It's like this. When we look at the mandible from behind, it comes up in the posterior area and it goes down towards the anterior area. This is the anatomical structure. The floor of the mouth follows this. When we think about it, if the floor of the mouth goes down like this, you may wonder whether the denture needs to be shorter towards the back. I'm going to address it later. In the anterior region, it can be reflecting of the floor of the mouth, but in the posterior area, it comes up. So it needs to be slightly lower than that. So the denture length needs to be lengthened towards the lingual side as we go towards the posterior. There's mental foramen. I've talked about depressed ridge. If there is a significant alveolar bone loss, the nerve can come up top. As a result, some patients complain of a pain in their lips as they use denture. If the patient has excessive alveolar bone loss, then the nerve can come up towards the alveolar crest. Hence, a bit of relief may be required. As shown, in the ridge with teeth, the mental foramen is positioned quite low. However, if there is significant alveolar bone loss, it looks as if it's coming towards the side, but in the end, it almost comes up to the top of alveolar bone. When we make denture and when the patient uses it, this area can be pressed. This can lead to patient complaints. There is also genial tubercles. This will be addressed later. Among the muscles that surround the tongue, there is genioglossus muscle. If there is not significant ridge resorption, these are not an issue. However, if there is a significant mandibular resorption, like class 5 or class 6, then this can come up, up to ridge crest. It becomes more prominent. It's almost connected to the lingual foramen. As we look at the image, I'll address it once again. This is where B is. When there is teeth, it is positioned quite low. However, in the case of excessive alveolar bone loss, it comes up to the top of the ridge. Patients can feel pain when this area is pressed continuously. At times, patients suffer a lot. You should remember this structure as well. Another structure that we need to consider is torus. If the torus does not interfere with the denture fabrication, it is not removed. However, as shown here, if it is quite prominent and big in size, then it will become difficult to get seal on the lingual side. 
If the size is huge as shown, this may need to be removed. If the size is small, relief in the denture may be sufficient. We need to be aware of this point. Finally, it's the border. I'm going to talk about this. In order to fabricate good denture, limiting structure needs to be considered. I would like to provide a little explanation on this. In the case of lower anterior, there is mentalis muscle. If there is significant alveolar bone loss, it can become very prominent. This is one of the very strong muscles. This can also serve in making the denture length very short in the labial side in the case of anterior region. Here is mentalis muscle. When we take impression, if this area is activated too much, the chin shape becomes like this, especially when the patient has been edentulous for a long period of time in order to close his or her mouth, the patient really uses this muscle. When we take impression, when you put in the tray, the tray is pushed forward. You can frequently see highly activated mentalis muscle. And this, making sure that this is not too activated when impression is taken is very important. This is lower anterior. This is external oblique ridge. It's related to buccal shelf. I've talked about bucinator muscle. It is attached to that muscle. It is not a muscle that interferes with denture. Even if you make the denture one or two millimeters longer than oblique ridge, it does not interfere with the denture. Buccal shelf, we can see it visually and you can see the border. And in this case, it's okay if it becomes extended a bit. It does not interfere or dislodge the denture. You need to check the buccal shelf and extend it as much as possible. It's over here. Here's bustinator muscle and the muscle is slightly concave. It is okay if it becomes extended. As the patient uses denture, if there is issue, it can be shortened. This is an area where we can get the primary stability. Therefore, you need to extend this area as much as possible in the buccal shelf area. In the case of masseter notch, there is a external oblique ridge and this is retromolar pad. And the masseter notch passes diagonally between the two. Bucinator muscle covers it. The M is masseter muscle. Patients with a very developed masseter muscle, when they chew, it can contract and push the bucinator muscle. Patients with a strongly developed masseter muscle this diagonal area, at times, you may need to make the denture concave here. There are three types. Patients with a strongly developed masseter muscle, you need to make this area concave. In general, first we make a straight design, and the patients with highly developed masseter muscle the patient will complain of severe pain at times. Then you need to make it concave for the patient to use it more comfortably. Please remember masseter notch. The retromolar pad, I've talked about how this is one of the primary supporting structures and it is most prominent in the posterior area. A lot of ligament and muscles are attached to here. Because muscles are attached, then resorption does not occur easily. The structure does not collapse easily, even with significant time since extraction, the height and form is maintained. There is no resorption and it can be a landmark for occlusal plane. When we take impression, it is very important to take impression of this area accurately. The entire retromolar pad should be reflected in the impression.
Let's move on to the lingual side. We have covered labial and buccal side. Now we will address the lingual border. It is quite difficult to take impression. You cannot really see it and there's a lot of tongue movement and it's very difficult to get good impression of the lingual side. As mentioned, there is retromylohyoid fossa. And there's mylohyoid muscle. When you make the S, the activation of this muscle is very important. As shown here, lingual flange shape follows the contraction of mylohyoid muscle. If you cannot take impression here properly, then when the patient moves the tongue, it can be quite painful. Mylohyoid ridge. This has been addressed earlier. I'm going to talk about the structure once again. In the anterior area, it's down. It goes up towards the posterior region. There's ridge also on the other side. Therefore, the muscle coming from both sides meet in the middle, forming the floor of the mouth. The bone that is in the middle is hyoid bone. I'm sure those of you who have studied anatomy in the past, it might jog your memory. When the patient swallows or when the patient moves, when the patient puts food in the mouth, the tongue automatically sort of sticks out. When the patient swallows, floor of the mouth is lifted. If you cannot register it properly, then it will be pressed down upon. When the tongue moves, the denture will press down upon the floor of the mouth and it can be quite painful and it will not be able to function properly. The patient will not be able to move tongue, so they experience a lot of pain and they will not be able to function properly. We need to take impression of how the floor of the mouth moves. As you see over here, the mylohyoid ridge is over here. It forms the floor of the mouth. The muscle is attached to here. The muscle goes up, but the length of the denture does not become shorter accordingly, but it passes through the design. The design becomes like this, as shown on the right in the posterior area. It passes the mylohyoid ridge and extends about four to six millimeters. R is at rest when the tongue is not moving and is at rest. The floor goes down. We need to activate the tongue movement and then once it's activated and is lifted, we need to take impression of that structure and then we take impression following this muscle and extend it to four to six millimeters. Beyond the ridge is retromylohyoid fossa. Then we can utilize undercuts here. We need to take note of these structures, especially in the lingual region. Let me ask you a question. Yes, please. When mylohyoid muscle is at rest, it goes down, and when it is activated, it goes up. However, it does not fit the ridge, but it is extended 4 to 6 millimeters. Tongue rest. It sounds very important for tongue rest. My concern is that when we take impression, the tongue is protruded out. Then it is lifted, but when we chew, it does not stay high. At times it goes down and then comes back up. It moves. When it goes down, perhaps there can be empty space. When we chew food, I am concerned whether food impaction may occur. The patients always complain that after they have a meal, a lot of food impaction occurs. Will it be a major problem? 
Thank you for the question. It's not reflected here, but in the middle there's tongue, as mentioned. Tongue contributes in stabilizing the denture. The structure is shown here on the lingual side concave. As the tongue goes on top of it, denture is stabilized. The difference with this image is that there is tongue in actual patient. Yes, the tongue can go down. I don't think the tongue will go in, but yes. When it goes down, there's a slight space, but it's not significant space as shown here. When patient chews, the tongue continues to move. When we chew food, food can go into buccal vestibule or the tongue space. The tongue actually pushes the food towards the occlusal table for the person to chew. The tongue continues to move as we dine. When we eat a meal, I do not uh, think that the tongue will go into rest state and that it will lead to food impaction. I don't think it will lead to significant patient discomfort. Let me give you an example. Let's think we're chewing tofu. I don't think the tongue will always remain on top. At times, we can swallow. Then it will be in functional state, otherwise it will be lower. When you swallow, it goes up. Even when you continue to chew food, mylohyoid muscle, it can go down and perhaps there can be food impaction. The lateral surface of tongue and the space within the denture. I don't think that the space itself will be significant so much so that there will be food impaction. The length itself is not significantly extended. At times, patients complain that there is a food impaction after using denture preps. In order to prevent such complaints, we need to tell the patient ahead that because of this anatomical reasons, there can be food impaction to a certain point. Then the patient may be able to respond more favorably. If we do not explain this ahead, and when we respond after the patient raises a complaint, it will come off as an excuse. So we need to explain this ahead. It may build upon our credibility. If you're concerned about food impaction, we need to tell the patient ahead. Yes, I agree. I entirely agree. I believe that we need to sufficiently explain about potential discomforts or difficulties to the patient when we deliver our treatment. Thank you for your answer. There are many questions here. Let's look at the real-time chat. Let's entertain a couple of questions. You, I look forward to the fabulous lecture today. Let me go down. Daisy, Professor Kim Jong, nice to meet you. I look forward to your lecture. Thank you for the good lecture. It says, when there's resorbed alveolar bone, the patient sometimes complain of pain and mental foramen due to the lower denture. I've experienced such cases as well. We need to provide relief. And this is something that can be checked as the patient uses it. If the patient complains of discomfort, we need to provide relief. If alveolar bone resorption is so severe, in such a case, a full denture may be okay, but we can also recommend implant supported over denture. I think it would be better if we can get the support and retention coming from the implants. For edentulous patients, are two implants allowed for edentulous patients? 
Not yet. I think this should be passed very quickly for patients. We need to make sure that the two implants can be insured and we can add attachments like magnet. Rather than making survey the crown, using attachments are not insured as of yet. To provide a direct answer, we need to specify where it hurts by using tools and mark it using indelible pencil and provide relief. This may be a temporary relief in order to address it fundamentally, we need to provide implant treatment. Mijin, what is the easiest way to actually check the buccal shelf when we look at patient's oral cavity? If there is significant amount, it will be easy to discern. We need to use our tactile senses to find the oblique ridge. And when we make a tray, once external oblique ridge is confirmed, we need to make the tray one or two millimeters buckly and then start off. The most accurate way to identify is to check visually on the buccal side while doing retraction. You need to look at where the muscle attachment is and check the different relations. I think that will be meaningful. Spring breeze, the retracted tongue may cause retention issues. How can I train the patient? If the patient retracts tongue habitually, what should we do? That's a difficult area. I believe the anterior region of lingual side is where the seal breaks most frequently. We need to train the patient to protrude the tongue. It's very important at rest, not just for the patients, but the patients with teeth. It would be most comfortable for them to position their tongue forward. We need to train the patients of that. We need to train the patients. We tell the patients to put the tongue towards the tooth. It's reflected in the textbooks, but if the training is difficult, we can make a training groove intentionally so the patient can touch that. You can make artificial structure. When we deliver our prosthesis, we need to tell the patient to stick the tongue towards the incisal edge of the lower, it's not easy for the patient. We need to make a groove or a shelf in the midline area to make the patient protrude tongue more easily. We need to have the patient push the tongue forward. Wonderful. If there is torus in the lower and if there is no undercut in torus and if it has appropriate height, will it be of help in maintaining the torus while fabricating the denture in terms of retention and maintenance? I don't think it will be of help. But I think we can provide denture as is. As you have mentioned, it's not going to be of help, but at times it will be difficult to do surgical approach. Therefore, you can just provide relief. If possible, I personally think that removing it is better. In the torus area, the mucosa is very thin, so patients respond very sensitively. Therefore, providing good relief is important. Yes, the mucosa thickness is very thin. Meijin, I always participate, but it's so difficult to get the coffee coupon. I think the staff needs to take note of this person. Light. If the buccal shelf area is tight and if the bosonator muscle is attached to the alveolar crest, in other words, if the vestibule is low and if it is mobile, how can I set the position of the denture border for denture stabilization? And can you give me any tips for impression taking? What do you do when the buccal shelf border is tight? When we do conventional full denture, 
buckle shelf is very important for support. If the space is very limited, the patient will not be used it comfortably. It will be better to do implanted surgery, but if it is not likely, you can also do vestibuloplasty. If the vestibule is too high, you can adjust and extend the vestibule. You can take a surgical approach. In the case of bosonator muscle and masseter muscle does not affect. Therefore, in the area, you can extend over the bosonator muscle. On the buccal side, you need to extend as much as possible. And then, if there is sore spot or if there are any discomforts, so we need to adjust it, but we need to attempt the extension. KS. In wax denture with denture teeth alignment for curing with masticatory force applied, how can I take impression? Taking impression in wax denture. Is it easy to do? I'm thinking that the base is made of resin. If record base extension is appropriate, you can use the concept of wash impression. You need to use materials which are very fluid. In this case, perhaps we can use a closed mouth technique. Today, the focus is on the lower. If you do closed mouth technique, in the case of lower, tongue movement is very important. Therefore, considerations need to be made. The sun. Are there any minor surgeries we can do to prevent the pressure on inferior alveolar nerve? I think we need to talk with the surgical side. You can make it lower. You can adjust the mental foramen and reposition the inferior alveolar nerve. Yes, there is such surgery. TS, is there a tip in doing border molding? What actions can I take if I feel hesitant about removing the torus? Border molding will be addressed in the later part of my lecture. Okay, so professor, because there are more contents in your lecture to be addressed, we will end the interim question and answer session and entertain most of the questions at the end of your lecture. Thank you for your many meaningful questions and words of encouragement. I look forward to your continued participation. If you raise your questions, we will do a lucky draw and send coffee coupons. Professor, please carry on with your lecture. Up until now, we have discussed about how we need to extend 4 to 6 millimeters beyond the mylohyoid ridge. I'm going to talk about the reason in more detail. This was addressed briefly before. This is the tongue area. There is a bit of contour. The tongue goes on top here and provides a stabilization. Here's the ridge. If the denture ends here, the border can cause pain on the ridge. It is very important to do such extension and such movement needs to be reflected in order to get the seal. Retromylohyoid fossa is very important. I've already mentioned this. The ridge where floor of the mouth and muscles are attached is called mylohyoid ridge. Even beyond that, the denture should extend slightly longer. This is an area where it is not affected by the muscle, so we can extend it longer. There is undercut in the mandible. This is an area where we can utilize and it can contribute to stabilizing the position of the lower. Posterior margin, this is beyond the denture. It's the same with getting the lingual border. We have the patient stick the tongue out and get the movement of the muscle. 
We call the various muscle layers retromylohyoid curtain. When the patient sticks the tongue out, the front part of the curtain gets closed. Hence, border of the denture can be formed in terms of a posterior extension. All movement that determine lingual flange is determined by tongue movement. I'm going to address this once again later. Let's look at the lingual side once again. I've talked about how seal gets broken at the frontal part in the lingual side. The patient in general has a habit of retracting tongue. In the anterior side of the lower, on the lingual side, there is a wrinkle called sublingual fold. There's a wrinkle that goes horizontally. The fold should be covered and seal should be maintained. This is where salivary glands are. Therefore, when we take impression on the lower lingual side, if you're conflicted, you need to check that fold in the anterior area. That is very important. In the middle, there's mylohyoid muscle. At rest, the muscle goes down and upon tongue movement, the floor of the mouth goes up. Once it goes up on the tongue, we can get the convex form. If the muscle is not activated, then the impression will be straight over here. That is why I've shown you this form in the first slide, and that's why I've mentioned that you should remember this. It should be convex towards the tongue. You need to remember this structure. It needs to be extended by 4 to 6 millimeters, and it needs to be in a form of inward slope. As Professor Cho has mentioned, once the muscle is relaxed, the space between flange and floor of the mouth occurs, and there can be issues with food impaction, and ways to address this problem have been mentioned Towards the posterior of this area, the muscle attachment ends here. The denture extends beyond that. The length of it is not limited and it can be extended further. We can use the undercut of the mandibular body. This is important for retention of lower denture. How much of it is extended is shown here. Class 1 is ideal. If we can extend as much as possible, that would be good. But at times, when the patient sticks a tongue out, it can be pushed. Retromylohyoid fossa and undercut. At times, it can be difficult to utilize. This is something that cannot be seen easily, but we need to find it while doing border molding. We can use a dental mirror. We can use this to check when the patient pushes the tongue forward, the mirror is pushed out. This can be of help in gaining more stability. The purpose of it is to do as much of an extension. S-curve is formed based on retromylohyoid fossa and the movement of muscle and premylohyoid fossa. The one-third of the posterior side is retromylohyoid fossa, the middle third is mylohyoid muscle, and the anterior third is sublingual fold. On the buccal side, there is a need to make sure the mentalist muscle is not overactivated. Buccal shelf needs to be extended as much as possible. Masseter notch may be formed if the patient has strong masticatory force. The overdenture needs to cover the entire retromolar pad. That is the conclusion. So let's move on to taking impression. We can see these kind of dentures very frequently. 
This is a model after having done impression properly, and this is the original denture. You can see significant difference in size. If you make denture with incorrect impression, it can lead to inappropriate denture. When we take preliminary impression, this kind of form needs to be gained. The muscle is activated and S-curve has been formed. You need to check whether this kind of form is gained. If you do not have any knowledge of anatomical structure, it is very difficult to gain. All structures need to be reflected. And this has been explained. It's okay if it is overextended impression. You need to make sure that it is not insufficient. Overextended impression is okay. That is very important in taking impression. Many people have these kind of stock tray, and these trays are wonderful, but each patient is unique. And in the preliminary impression taking stage, it is very difficult to get the overextended impression using stock tray. It's very technique sensitive. So when using stock tray and using wax, we proceed to treatment. And the tray that is larger than the width of the patient's bridge is used. Utility wax is used to extend the length. Old denture, you cannot trust it blindly. There is high possibility that the old denture it does not have appropriate form. Just reference it, reference the width, and in the case of the extension on the lingual side, we need to use a lot of wax. As you've seen the S curve, you, if you make a tray in the similar form, you can get the ideal preliminary impression. Preliminary impression is done using wax as much as custom as possible. Tray needs to be formed like this to take impression. It is necessary. If you do not know what kind of anatomical structures to look out for, you cannot make this. So this is the way that I prefer. This is a way using compound. It's quite difficult to get using a stock trade. Compound needs to be used you make a custom tray within patient's oral cavity in preliminary impression taking stage. You make custom tray and do wash impression using well, alginate once again. For me, this is preliminary impression taking. This is the way I do most frequently. Alginate wash impression image is missing here. It's same for the lower as well. The technique using compound is very good. One of the disadvantages is that, as shown here, the S-curve is not really clear. The compound is a very strong material. However, the myelohyoid muscle is not as strong, so it does not push the compound sufficiently. After you use compound once, you need to grind off the area where the myelohyoid muscle is to give space for the muscle. As mentioned, if you use compound, you can easily take overextended impression. The compound that I use frequently is at the cake type and it has higher softening temperature. For supplementation, I use the green stick compound and this one has lower softening temperature. Therefore, it is not really difficult to compensate. This slide is very important. When you take impression in the lower, actually, with this one photo, most of it can be addressed. How the tongue should be protruded. It's quite important that the patient is also sticking the tongue out. The position is quite similar, however, the shape of the tongue is rather different. On the left, the patient is sticking the tongue out after having been told to do so. The tongue on the left side is quite pointy and on the right, it's quite round. What's best? If you think about it, the right answer is the right image. I'll show you why. If the patient sticks the tongue out as shown on the left, pointy, 
The patient only uses intrinsic muscle to protrude the tongue. Therefore, the floor of the mouth does not come up and the tongue comes out like this. However, in order to stick the tongue out in a round manner, the muscle of the tongue is not used, the floor of the mouth is pushed up, and the tongue is protruded. Therefore, when you take impression, you need to have the patient stick the tongue out in a round manner. It's very important. That is very important, so I made a separate slide. If the tongue is towards uh, the ceiling of the mouth, the floor of the mouth comes up. This is at rest. This is when the patient is protruding tongue or is uh, sticking the tongue out in a round manner. The level of the floor of the mouth is different. It changes. You need to have the patient move the tongue in different ways to take impression. We use custom tray. Spaced tray is used, wax is used with it. You accentuate where pressure is applied. I want to talk about the contour of the lower tray. It is made one or two millimeter shorter than the anticipated denture base. So you take overextended impression and determine the border. It is made slightly shorter than that and space is secured for border molding. The lower posterior border is set so that it is in line with the retromolar pad. As for external oblique ridge, there was a question about that. This is the buckle shelf area. You can extend one millimeter more exterior to the external oblique ridge. Line is formed. This is a 45 degree straight line. If the patient has strong masticatory force, a notch can be provided. In this way, tray is formed. This is mylohyoid muscle. You can provide the space intentionally. Relief is provided intentionally here. The muscle can go up more in preliminary impression taking. If you feel like you haven't provided sufficient space for the muscle, intentionally you can give more space to make a custom tray. A tray should reflect the S curve. If you make a tray with a straight line in the end result, it is difficult to make a S curve. In the area where there is a buckle shelf, you need to leave it empty and wax is applied and tray is formed. The wax spacer is provided here. In the buckle shelf area, you need to make a tray without wax spacer so that the tray can be in contact. This form is what I prefer. The handle can be formed like this. In the case of full denture, there is rarely any case where a tray cannot be removed because the handle is too small, because there are not that many teeth. The size of the handle is not really important. I think making the patient move the tongue well and having the floor of the mouth come up is most important. So I prefer making tray handle like this. This is the length of the lower anterior. It's 18 millimeters. Up to this point, the handle is made and the patient can move their tongue like this. We need to make sure that the tray handle does not interfere with tongue movement. In the posterior area, handle is made to hold it as it is set during impression taking. If you forego this, you need to put your finger way deep. Therefore, it can interfere with a taking accurate impression. A tray is made and adjusted. One thing I want to point out is that if you make a tray using retromylohyoid fossa, this is undercut. If you try to put it in, it does not go in well. You need to put the tray back and then move it slightly forwards. In the case where you utilize a tray in a fabricating tray and the insertion path is very important. You may think why not do border molding with taking impression at the same time. What is important is that 
You need to take impression of the bridge accurately and you need to make a stable tray. After that, border molding should be done. We need to get the stable results with purple and you need to get the red more accurately once again. This is necessary. You need to do accurate preliminary impression and then do border molding. This is something I've made just for fun. Restoring gloss is quite important in my opinion. I am emphasizing it. Modeling compound is done. After adjusting temperature, you need to adjust it using your fingers. The modeling compound's gloss gets all gone because we press it with our fingers. When you use heat, you can restore gloss, and once it is adapted, you can check whether border molding has been done nicely visually. In the area where border molding is done nicely, the gloss disappears once it's set in oral cavity. Therefore, restoring gloss before you put it in the patient's mouth is very important. Border molding can be divided into one-step border molding and sectional border molding. Using modeling compound and doing sectional border molding is recommended in my opinion. With time and experience, once you have sufficiently understood the physiology of making denture, then perhaps you can do one-step border molding. In doing sectional border molding, it is very important to do from lingual border. It is quite difficult to do the lingual border, so we need to start from here and move on to the buccal side. Regarding buccal flange and masseter notch, this has been already been mentioned. Mentalis muscle, if it is excessively pulled, then it can be too short. In patients with overactivated mentalis muscle, then a seal can fail here frequently. The lower denture may become unstable because the area where the mentalis muscle runs can become too short. You need to make sure that the mentalis muscle is not too much activated and do border molding. So I've included this in the slide. If you have done a perfect job up to border molding, Taking final impression is not difficult. You have the patient to stick the tongue out and then do final impression. And if S curve is reflected nicely, you do boxing. After taking impression, the border form should be gained nicely. This is a part of the lab process. When you send it to the lab, you need to make sure that border form needs to be maintained. Model is finished, and now we move on to the next stage. Record base and wax rim is made, and VD is measured. Jaw relations are checked. Specific processes follow. This is the end of what I've prepared. I want to summarize once again. I want to mention that anatomical features are very important. When I have discussion with other dentists, I think this is something that many dentists feel difficult. This is the area where the floor of the mouth comes up and retromyelohyoid fossa is where it ends. The myelohyoid muscle and floor of the mouth, if you take impression nicely, then you can gain as curve on the buccal side, you can extend more. It's okay even if the muscle layer is pressed down. Because of the way it contracts, it does not interfere with the denture or make it fall off. Buckle shelf can withstand a lot of force, so you can extend towards the buckle shelf more. In the case of preliminary impression, overextended impression should be made. All structure that is required to fabricate a custom tray needs to be registered. As for tongue movement, you need to have the patient push forward the tongue in a round manner. If the patient sticks the tongue out too much, the denture can become shorter. It should be within the physiologic scope, up to the point where the lower anterior teeth are. That's how much the patient should stick the tongue out.
I want to end off my lecture by showing you this slide again. Posterior third is retromylohyoid fossa. You need to utilize undercut and the middle third. You need to take note of mylohyoid muscle. The floor of the mouth should be raised. In the case of anterior third, the sublingual fold. The seal needs to be done nicely. In the buccal border, we need to make sure that the labial side does not become too short. As for buccal shelf, it needs to be extended as much as possible. And depending on the masticatory force, you need to consider masseter notch. The retromolar pad needs to be covered entirely. You need to make sure that this is reflected in the impression. This is the end of what I've prepared. Thank you. Let's look at the real-time chat on Daniel's site. You have talked about how to do border molding in your lecture. If you're hesitant about removing torus, then you can use implant treatment. If there's no issue with it, you can do it, but or else you can just do implant treatment rather than being blamed by the patient for removing torus. I was caught off guard because I was looking at the questions. So can you repeat your question once again? The first question about removing torus. Is the patient hesitant about it or is the surgeon hesitant about it? I think it's the surgeon. I think it's connected to the question below. Meetin. No matter how well you make a lower denture, even if professor makes it, people throw it away. Shouldn't we just prohibit it? I think this is uh, too far fetched. It's mentioned here as well. Implant and torus seems a bit separate. If you can do implant treatment, then you can do it. If it is insured, then we can provide such treatment much easier. Along with my son, extending buccal shelf as much as possible. What is your clinical way to determine it? You said that as much as possible. And what do you mean by as much as possible? I think I've mentioned this earlier. When you make a tray, you need to find the external oblique ridge using our hands. It needs to be one or two millimeters longer than that. There was a question earlier, if the patient lacks buccal shelf and if retention is an issue, when we do border molding, we can extend it as much as possible. In those cases, it may become too long and it may fail because of that. I think we need to go through trial and error with this. If it is too long, you can remove it, along with the sun. If there is a sharp, soft tissue absorbed due to resorbed alveolar bone, do you do relief or do you register it accurately to get as much retention as possible? At times, when I do extraction in the remaining area, if it is too sharp, as I do extraction, I do bone flattening if denture is planned. Permanent soft lineup can be used as well. The time has elapsed too much. I don't think we'll be able to answer all the questions. We're going to read all the questions because you need to select the best question. And as for the rest, Professor Kim Jong-un will answer them later. Understood? I can do it if the patient has very little vestibule because the patient has been edentulous for a long period of time, how can I take impression and make full denture? As for the upper, we have addressed it in the last lecture and this person is saying that because there's very little vestibule in the upper, retention is an issue. We are going to move on. Those who have a lot of saliva, it is difficult to take impression on the lingual side. What is a good tip? How can I respond to gagging reflex due to retromylohyoid fossa? Meets in. In applying compound, it is difficult to find the right temperature. 
Can you explain in detail about how to use the water bath and setting the temperature and time? And this can be addressed later, tincture prime in the case of patients with severe bone resorption. After having taken good impression, if we make excellent lower denture, if the patient wants increase in retention, which should I choose, locator or magnet? This will be addressed later. Denture prime. When using custom tray and doing final impression, do you prefer doing wash impression rather than drilling a hole in the custom tray? Is this more favorable? TS, what about using polyether rather than compound? I cannot use alcohol lamp. Rose, thank you for the wonderful lecture. It was a good reminder. When taking impression in the lower, is there a way to make sure that the patient moves the tongue well upon impression? Professor Kim jong un can you select the best question? Who do you think is the winner today? I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all of you who have left the questions in today's lecture. Professor Kim jong un can you pick the best question? The person who raised the best question is shown in the middle, Mei Jin. This person has raised multiple questions and asked the questions that were clinically meaningful. I would like to select Mei Jin. I think this is the person who has said that he or she never won. Understood? Can you answer the question? Answering the best question. Shall we choose the question in the middle? Yes. It's difficult to find the right temperature in using compound. Is there a way to get the right temperature and time while using water bath? So I've talked about the softening temperature of compound. Water bath. I don't use it with just hot water. You need to use a special water bath where you can set the temperature. You can set exact the temperature with the water bath. These days, digital technology has been adapted here. So you can actually see the figures. You need to use the water bath where you can adjust the temperature. You need to Set it so that it fits the softening temperature. After you do it, you can put your finger in it to see how warm it is. That's right. Yes, you can get burns, so you need to be careful. Mi Jin, congratulations once again for being selected as the best question. To Mi Jin, separate contact will be made. And those of you who have won the coffee coupon event, Texts will be sent on Monday. Don't feel too let down because you weren't chosen this time around. The event continues on in Prosthodontics on Friday. I look forward to your keen interest. Professor, would you give a word of advice to your fellow dentists who have been studying hard about full denture up until late? I think you are all doing wonderful work. I would like to express my gratitude for listening my lecture. I am continuing to provide lectures on full denture at school and I still have a lot to think about in treating different patients. Don't think of it as too difficult to Try and treat the patients with trial and error. We'll be able to hone our technique. Start off with impression taking stage. With practice you, and by accumulating clinical experience, you'll be able to overcome such challenges. Thank you for coming despite your busy schedule. I look forward to your lecture next time around. Thank you. Dear viewers of Prosthodontics on Friday, did you enjoy the lecture with Professor Kim Jong-un? We were able to get meaningful tips on getting the right impression in the lower, which is always difficult for many of us. 
Answers that were unanswered today will be addressed via reply by Professor Kim Jong-un. Thank you.